John, first of all, uh, one of the interesting things you brought up was about how um, outdated the term uh, hacker has become. So how do we get past uh, these preconceived notions uh, that we have about um, you know, uh, hackers and uh, change the, the industry's mindset that we need to be uh, actually on guard against attackers? I think a lot of it is, um, is certainly our, you know, um, presentations like this where we can get that word out. Uh, I think it's also not throwing the baby out with the bathwater kind of thing. I mean, I think the term hacker has application for people that do tinker and, and are doing great things like the whole, you know, make it movement and things of that nature. But I think it is kind of uh, security leaders recognizing that there's a whole new world of attacker and to brand that specifically and not take what we've come to know as hackers and just kind of create that as an umbrella, always nefarious term. Uh, and I think the skill sets and motivations and classifications yeah, are, are certainly yeah, yeah. different. And uh, you also touched on uh, collaboration. Uh, how do we improve our collaboration to, to combat uh, cyber criminals, cyber spies, and, and cyber terrorists, as you pointed out? Yeah, I think the easiest way would be get rid of the lawyers um, because that's usually the biggest challenge with collaboration that we see is, is individuals. I mean, we go to, you know, if you go to any conference, you'll see that the individual IT or, or ISO, uh, sorry, chief information security officers and them will collaborate. But when it becomes a situation where the company may be fearful of, well, somebody's going to know we're not doing this, or somebody's going to know we don't have the right practices in place. It's truly the lawyers, I think, that get involved and say, no, we're not going to collaborate. We're not going to become part of a, of a local group that can share that information. So I think, honestly, we've got to get the attorneys to really start understanding the risk reward on this and, and kind of open the doors and allow that collaboration to occur. And as we all know, attackers do collaborate. So it is probably a big piece. Also, the competitors, uh, VMware, actually has done a great thing, which I think uh, more organizations, more companies need to do. VMware has actually put in place a policy, I believe, that says, hey, if you call them and you say, we're under attack, they won't question, do you have your a product support agreement in place? They will help you. And even if you're not under a support agreement, they will do everything they can to support you. I think we need more vendors to kind of take that, to understand we're all in this together, and we can sort out the agreements later on, but let's figure out a way to work with each other, not against each other. Given the the resources that a lot of these uh, cyber criminals have, and, and you touched on the, the contests that they'll run, and the cash prizes, cars, what have you, that, that they'll give away, you know, how can organizations in both the, the, the public and private sector begin to, to, to compete with that? I think it is hard to compete with, but I do think, you know, especially here in the U.S. and even North America, we've got a, a, and Europe, we've got a vastly different mindset. I think people all ultimately want to do good, and they want to be on the side of right, not to be too cliché. But um, I think that you can compete by creating a bigger mission uh, of what you're really standing up for. I think, you know, the one thing that's interesting is most information security people I talk to, you know, don't really, if, if you ask them their top three, I don't ever hear, we want more money or we want a car. They just want more tools and the ability to do their job really great. And I think that speaks to the workforce we have, the, their passion. And I think, you know, we can rally that, it, it, it changes the dynamics. And in terms of the actual steps that uh, companies take to uh, you know, try to defend themselves, you know, how often would you say they need to be uh, evaluating their vulnerabilities and, and also you know, simulating attacks against their systems? You know, I think that um, incident response uh, testing and uh, tabletop simulations, you know, we're introducing a cyber range. Um, so from my perspective, I think it's a tool that needs to be done more and more often. We're not seeing that as part of kind of the tool set that most defenders are using. So I think it should be something, you know, at minimum of once a year. If you're doing a pen test once a year, and you're doing a risk assessment once a year, and a security risk analysis, then think about doing a tabletop simulation at least once a year. Uh, or try to flip-flop them where you're maybe doing it every other year. But I think the culture we need is one of, hey, Let's test, 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 let's simulate, let's see how we really will respond under, under some type of a stressful, chaotic situation.